No. No. Okay, what's up this week, Lady Ada? Uh, okay, first up, we've got a one millimeter 26 pin FPC cable. I'm gonna be using this for some floppy stuff, so just hold on tight to this. Uh, it you know, came in before the floppy stuff did, um, but that's when we use it for. It's uh, floppy disks, floppy disk drives used in laptops use this cable, and I wanted an extra. Um, next up, we have a gorgeous, uh, even the people who are fabricating it were like, this is a really good looking a nice screen. TFT screen. It's a 1.47 inch, uh, 172 by 320 pixel IPS display using the very popular and well supported ST7789 chipset. Um, it's uh, very easy to wire up and use with Arduino circuit Python libraries. You just uh, set the resolution to 172. By 320, and it's you know extremely high uh, PPS uh, pixels per square inch. I think it's 220, which is I think the the highest density we've got. Um, or very close to the 1.3. And on the back, it's also got an iSpy connector, uh, so you can use it with a breadboard with the breakout pads. Uh, it can be used with three or five volt logic and power. Has a micro SD card slot if you want to store images or animations on it as well, and share it with the SPI port. And then the iSpy connector makes it very easy for you to wire it up if you want to put the display far away. So yeah. um, a lovely little display will have its big sister, the 1.9 inch, in the store shortly. All right, did you want to show it off? Uh, yes, anywhere? I can show it off. Okay. Hold on, let me get real close because it's real small. Hold on. Yeah. Let's flip it around. I like that we have really good photos of our stuff. However, I do like that we are able to always do live demos of yes. our stuff because I feel like that that means it actually is kind of easy to use. Proof of life. It, it, it does mean something a little different because um, you could see it turned on. Like, yeah, you know, stuff over video cameras and web cameras and all that. But you um, see angles. But I you mean, could, this is but an IPS display. Like, this is very good. IPS display. So it's very beautiful. It's got that round rect. Uh, oh, people ask. Round rectangle displays are made by deleting pixels. There isn't like some weird like radial squishing. Uh, yeah. So, you know, if at the beginning when you see it display some text, uh, the display gets cut off. Yeah. So that's uh, how it works. Okay. So anyways, so here's the beautiful photos. They're all beautiful. good. We, have, we love our beautiful photos, but uh, I like to live demos too. Okay, next up. Okay, next up, we have a new time of flight sensor. That's the TOF sensor for the code. Uh, which you can get 10% off this sensor uh, if you're watching this live. This is a new time of flight sensor from ST. Um, this sensor, uh, they, you know, they've done the VL6180 and then they went to the VL53L0X uh, and then the 53L1X and those got up to like four meter distance. This one is a shorter meter distance. This is 1.3 meters distance, but it's good for closer up. Um, according to the data sheet, it can do as little as one meter, one millimeter away. Um, so it's good for closer measurements um, because it can, you know, the other sensors kind of can't do less than one inch, one and a half inches away, and this one can do less than that. Uh, and it's got Arduino library support right now. We'll be working on Circuit Python library support. So if the text description says it's got it, by the time you watch this video, it does. But um, as you know, this chip just came out, and we got it real fast into the store. Um, using the Arduino library and thought I could show it All right, shut up. as well. Another live uh, demo. Yeah, and you can see the little sensor. It's kind of nice. And you can see it's uh, it got me moving up and down. Hold on. All right, that works. Huh? That works. It does work, and it doesn't display if I'm too far away. So um, a still time of flight sensor. Uh, you know, I think this one is good if you just need um, closer measurements, you know, if you don't need up to four meters, if you only need one and one and a quarter meters away, uh, then this one will do the job very well. Okay, and then uh, next up. It's a revision, but it's a well-loved revision. People um, really enjoyed the pink feather RP2040 that we put into the shop as a freebie over uh, the winter holiday and uh, we thought let's just make all of our RP2040 boards pink. And so now our classic 4884 feather RP2040 same exact design, but now pinker, not black, pink with black silkscreen. It looks gorgeous. Um, and if you uh, order them now, that's what you'll get. Yeah. So thank you, everyone, who said more pink boards. Pink, pink, pink. You said it. We listened. KB2040 last week, this week, the Feather yeah. RB2040. 
All right, and then the star of the show tonight, besides you, lady, our community, our customers, our staff running things behind the scenes, and more is the new Feather ESP32 uh, V2. This is a really big, fresh upgrade to the Feather ESP32, one of our most popular feathers. Because of the chip shortage, I can't get CP2104s anymore. That's the USB serial chip, and so I had to update to the CP2102, which has a slightly different schematic usage, and so it was like, well, I got to go fix that up to revise this board so I can keep manufacturing it. And then before you know it, I kind of like remodeled the whole thing. So the whole board has gotten like a huge update, um, which is great. Uh, so let's just stop here because I can, I can point at it while it's nice and big. Um, on the right there, uh, it used to be a Warum module and now it's the Pico module. Um, the Pico module is an ESP32 with eight megabytes of flash and two megabytes of PS RAM. So that's twice the amount of flash and then extra PS RAM that was not available on the original ESP32. That's super handy if you're buffering data or you just want like, um, you want to have a camera interface or a buffer, uh, a display output, uh, read large JSON files, parse them. That PS RAM is so handy and it, the, the ESP, IDF and Arduino just natively just you know map that memory in and so you can use it. It's not as fast as the SRAM, but um, it's great for, again, large data buffering. Um, to the lower left of that, there is a new NeoPixel on it. The ESP32 did not have a NeoPixel, now it does. Uh, and the power pin is on another GPIO, so you can go into low power usage. And that's another thing, we really optimize this feather for better low power support. Um, so the um, NeoPixel can be turned off, and then there's a separate LDO right above it for the Stemma QT connector. That's the kind of yellow four pin connector above that. You can get down to 70 uh, microamps of power draw while in deep sleep for the ESP32, which is pretty good because um, you, know, you can wake up from deep sleep with the RTC on at, at any timer interval you'd like. Um, the Stemma QT port uh, is also new on there. It's a vertical port and allows you to connect um, you know, any of our dozens of STEM IQT, or uh, you can use a Grove adapter to connect Grove I2C sensors, or from SparkFun, um, their Quick sensors. Or a lo There's a lot of companies now making um, sensors with this adapter cable, so it's plug and play, no soldering required, and you can turn off power um, separately to this port, uh, again, with that GPIO pin. Um, there is a USB serial converter, which is now updated to a uh, CP2102, it can now do three megabits. There's also an extra uh, tactile button on pin 38. Uh, and the USB has been updated from micro B to USB C. So you can see like a lot of new stuff. It's pretty much pin compatible with the original Feather ESP32. Um, all, the, um, all the numbers are on the back. The named pins like um, SDA, SCL, um, Mosi, Miso, S Clock, a TX and RX, those did change the underlying pin number because um, in order to get the PS RAM, you know, one pin disappeared and one, once one pin disappears, it kind of turns into this, uh, uh, you know, every pin has to sort of change. And so the numbered pins didn't change and the analog pins didn't change, but the named I squared C, SPI and UART pins did change. So just in your code, you'll have to recompile it, uh, which you'll need to anyways to take advantage of the extra flash and PS RAM because uh, you have to select a new board support package. Um, just make sure you use the, the words like MOSI, MISO, uh, SDA, SCL, RX, TX, and that will automatically translate into the numbers. Don't use the underlying like pin seven names for it. Um, but otherwise this should work, drop in with pretty much any of your Feather ESP32 projects. Uh, and it's just a big upgrade around the, you know, just everything got upgraded and updated. It's so much better more pin labels on the top. Um, so I'm really psyched to release this, more mounting holes. So good, Feather ESP32. Good work. Me too. It's no <sighs>